Hello, beautiful human. We're about to hang out with Pal Fu, but first, I gotta tell you about ASU. Message and data rates may apply. If you're considering going back to school, you should ask yourself the following questions. Do you need the flexibility to take classes on your schedule? Do you have college credits that you need transferred? Do you want to earn a highly respected degree from a world-renowned university? If you answered yes to any of those questions, Arizona State University really could be the school for you. Arizona State University offers over 200 highly ranked degree programs, 100% online. You'll learn the same curriculum designed by their award-winning faculty from wherever you are. You're going to earn the same degree as an on-campus student, plus ASU Online accepts most transfer credit. If you want more information, text Zach. To 35517. Discover for yourself why ASU has been ranked number one in the nation for innovation five years in a row and why 90% of graduates get recruited or at least offered one job within 90 days of graduation. Learn to thrive at Arizona State University. To find out more about ASU online degree programs, text my name Zach to 35517. Here is Pal Fu. Let's do this. Show. Hello, can you hear me? Yo, yeah. Hi. Hello, people. How are you doing? Good. Are you in Canada? Yes. What's good? Nice, uh, nice microphone that you don't have it on a stand, but you're holding. That's yeah, a great I, move. Thank you, bro. I, I always hold this one. I've never had a stand for it. So I, I'm assuming you've cut many vocals using that mic, probably in this exact same dark lit bedroom. Yeah. Bedroom? Yeah. Yeah, it's my bedroom. This is where I always record. I just roll out of bed and uh, start recording. <laughs> where in Canada are you from? Uh, I'm like an hour out of Vancouver, uh, east, and it's like in a little city called Mission. Cool. I, mm -hmm. I love Canada with every fiber of my being. They have a great arts program. They love artists. Uh, yeah. but, but, but like CanCon, your rise is very, I don't know, would you say that it's not typical? I, I want to say one thing. Uh, the EP that you put out, phenomenal. And a lot of the songs pre Coffee for Your Head, I'm going to be frank with you. I was like really nervous to listen to them because sometimes, you know, you know, one song you can get lucky on, maybe, right? And then you can have like trash the rest. Yep. Totally what I was expecting, dude. Totally not the case. So, That's bravo. Good. Thank that you. Mi that microphone in that bedroom has really done a lot of good work. That's good to hear. Thank you. So, <clears throat> did you record? Uh, what deathbed right there i think i recorded it in my last house but it was like same setup like in my room and stuff i want to kind of dive into the story because the song's been around for a while but you didn't post it to spotify until like 2019 of april but that's because it, the song was done by this girl b Christie, who is an established artist but you how did you first hear coffee and how did that connect with you um, I actually didn't even hear coffee. I heard the beat first. I was just scrolling through SoundCloud and I found the beat and then it was like sampling her and I didn't know who she was. So I asked the producer who like who she was and he said Biba Doobie. So then I like looked her up and I realized like she has some good music and she was quite a bit bigger than me at that time. So like I couldn't get a hold of her to clear the sample and ask like if I could use it. So then I had to get like my label to contact her label and do it that way. But it took a long time. So but yeah. you you move forward with creating over the B and using her vocals on the record no matter what. Like you weren't, some people would hear that news and they'd give up or like move on. Yeah, no, like the main thing for me is like, I just want to like make good music and like stuff that I enjoy listening to. So like I heard the beat and like I had, like I was just flowing on it. So I was like, I might as well record it, you know? I wasn't sure if like I'd be able to upload on Spotify or anything, but like I enjoyed the beat, so I wanted to write to it. So the original version didn't have her in there at all? Uh, the original beat? Yeah, like your, the, the original beat with your rap over it had no be in there no coffee anything no it, it had her in it the whole time i just didn't know who she was though like oh god so you were using her song essentially rogue without her officially knowing yeah wild why <laughs> but this is a great thing for her too right yeah no it's, it's helped her out a lot like yeah it's pretty I mean, it's crazy a game, it's a game changer and, and does this how does this record well, you weren't expecting this record to do what it's doing right now right or did uh, no, I mean, like, I knew it was better than all my other songs just because, like, the numbers on YouTube and stuff. But I, I had no idea it would go this big. Does it change the way you create music now compared to before? I mean, in the sense of, like, 
now that I know that like people enjoy that lo-fi sound, which I've always liked personally, it's like, it's kind of more inspiring to make even more lo-fi rap as whereas before I wasn't sure if like people liked it as much, you know, but it's like, it seems like they do. So. But you've been making music from uh, since 2017 and it's fair to say that it's all kind of been lo-fi rap. Mm. I'm used to it is a great record. Thank you. I would consider that lo-fi rap. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all my songs, I would say kind of have like a lo-fi, lo-fi stem to them or whatever. But um, what do you like? How do you define lo-fi? It's it's just basically like lo-fi means low fidelity. So it's like quality, basically. So like either the drum beat will have like static in the background or like your vocal will, will actually sound like you recorded in your bedroom, you know? And it's kind of just like, it's kind of just like homemade sounding stuff, like personal stuff, you know? Does everything you release moving forward need to remain lo-fi? No. I mean, I, I just like, for me, like I just make whatever I want to make, you know, like whatever I think sounds good. And I like, I, I do enjoy lo-fi sounds. So, I mean, it'll probably continue to be lo-fi, but. But not necessarily all in your bedroom on mediocre equipment. Uh, I don't know. I, I enjoy recording in my bedroom. Like I'll probably always record in my bedroom because I just feel comfortable here. But um, what I, you, I've re- Sorry, go ahead. What is it about your, your, your bedroom? And like when you record, are you, do you write your raps before or do you kind of free flow verse, like listen to the beat? How does it work? Yeah, no, I, I usually listen to the beat first and then I'll just like flow different melodies over it or like different rap cadences. And then once I like have something that I think sounds cool, then I'll try and write the lyrics too. But it's all in your bedroom in real time. Yep. Cool. So you record everything. Mm-hmm. How long will it take you usually to figure out what a verse should be? Uh, what, what do you mean by that? I mean, like, how does it come naturally to you where you just feel this inclination where you need to sit down and kind of go? Or do you go step by step? Like, will you do each verse of a song, fix it, master it, get it right? And then move on. Okay, I see what you mean. Uh, no, I usually just I just like freestyle. I just do whatever I'm vibing with. You know, like sometimes I'll make the chorus first. Sometimes I'll make a verse first. It just depends. Whatever, whatever comes to me. This is also fascinating because like this is the time of lo-fi. This song is great. Number one. Number two. It sounds very. It just sounds like it sounds like the the, the everybody record because it does it, it doesn't sound super crisp and pristine and there's like a charm to it that is proper and right Mm -hmm. um i don't know you don't feel any pressure creating music now no and like i don't i don't want to like i feel like i could if i like focused on it you know but it's like i rather stay away from that so does anybody call you by your real name now uh i mean i've always had like fans like comment my real name i'm like that's kind of weird but (laughs) but i guess people know it now so Pow Fu is how you you choose to be addressed in all situations. Uh, in in like my artist situations, like in on the music side, like I would prefer Pow Fu. Is there a difference between Isaiah and Pow Fu? Uh, no, it's just like Pow Fu. Like I know we're talking about music, you know, and then like Isaiah is just like at home and friends and stuff. I was listening to your genius piece that you did, and you talk about writing and. You do, you, you write from other people's perspectives, right? And your own, you could do both? Yeah, yeah, I, I do both, yeah. So, Pao Fu embodies all of that, both your own stories and then somebody else's? Yeah, yeah. Craft. Yeah, no, I just, I just, like, I just enjoy telling stories and writing stories. So, it's, like, my, like, my life, I have, like, some stories of myself, but it's, like, I also enjoy writing from other people's perspectives and trying new things, you know? I Can't Sleep. What, where did that record come from? Is that your story or somebody else's? Uh, I think that was, that was a long time ago as well. It's kind of hard because I've written so many songs, so I'm trying to, like, remember what goes through my brain at that time. Um, I think, I think that might have been around a time where I was, like, in love with somebody. That, I wrote that one probably two years ago, yeah. Yeah, I think that one was probably about myself. I, I know I wasn't writing about somebody else with that one. And essentially, it's a song about being so in love with somebody and wanting to give them 100% of your devotion and time and energy that you just can't sleep. Yeah, yeah. It's a great record. Thank you. Um, what are you thinking, Dan? Is Deathbed, is that written? Like, are you rapping from, like, your perspective of you dying? Yeah. Is that hard to write about? 
or like were, did you actually feel that way when you were writing the lyrics yeah no I was, I was pretty sad when I was writing it to be honest because like I was like I was like when I, when I write a song like I try and like put myself in that position right and so I was actually like thinking of like what I would be feeling if I were actually dying right now and like what people around me would act like and stuff I was just like thinking about it and I was just writing down everything that kind of came to my brain so and so it was like it was like I wrote it really quickly like sometimes songs can take me a long time to write but like since it was like such a new topic for me like there's so much stuff I was thinking like there's a lot that I could write now but what gets you there what happens in your life where you are suddenly hit with this concept of uh, I want to I want to think about being dead and what my life would look like from that perspective um well like for me like kind of the hardest part of writing songs is like coming up with a story or like writing something that's new and not like something that everybody writes about right so like whenever I come up with a different idea I'm usually happy because it's like gives me something new to write about with new ideas and new lyrics and stuff so that one I heard the sample of Viva Doobie singing about I'll make a cup of coffee for your head and like don't fall asleep yet and stuff and like I already had a song about sleeping and I didn't want to write about sleeping again. So I was like, how could I look at this differently? I was like, we could be talking about like permanent sleep, you know? So then I was like, that's kind of a cool story and a cool take on it. So I wrote about it. The coffee for your head, which is essentially that person, right? That keeps you going or that thing that keeps you going, that keeps you awake, that keeps you motivated. Mm -hmm. Do you have something like that in your life? Uh, yeah. Like I'm a spiritual person. So I say like, I, I rely a lot on Jesus. Who, uh, like gives me like he gives me like a reason to do things and like continue to wake up and stuff when did religion like has it been in your life forever yeah it's like i grew up in a christian home so like it's always kind of been there but i feel like over the past like couple of years it's grown a lot so what is how does that reflect your art would you say that your your music is morally sound uh i definitely try to incorporate it in it in different ways and stuff like I'll talk like in death, but like I talk about heaven and stuff and like how like it's a sad story. Right. But hopefully I'll go to heaven and it'll be a good, good future or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I like I've been reading the Bible lately a bit more. So like I'll just try to like I'll, I'll use like Bible quotes a lot of time and some of my music. And it's just like I don't want I don't want to make like Christian music, you know, because I would turn a lot of people away from it. I feel like and a lot of people like wouldn't be able to re relate as hard. So it's like I want to make like regular music that everybody can listen to, you know, but also just like throw in little little things about like my religions and stuff. Yeah, that that, that reflects you, but also makes people think and helps elevate the story. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. Um, yeah, you were talking about people relating to your lyrics, and and I'll come back to you. You end with "I've been in love with you forever." is what I wish I would have told her. It seems like a lot of people are connecting with that one. Yeah, I actually didn't even write that one. That was my friend, uh, Rose Boy, who did the last verse. He's oh, on really? a few records. Yeah. yeah, no, me and him, like, we FaceTime every day and just write music together. It's pretty awesome. Is he your constant creative partner? Yeah, like, I, I used to just write by myself because, like, I don't like writing with other people. Like, it's usually, like, awkward or just, like, I'm scared to, like, give them ideas and stuff. But, like... I, me and him have been, like, he lives in Florida and I'm up in Canada, so we didn't even really meet each other. We just met through SoundCloud, and we had FaceTime, like, every day for the past year and just come up with ideas together and share lyrics and stuff. Was he involved at all with Coffee for Your Head? No. Now, people in your, the comment section on your YouTube love to share their stories, and a lot of the times they're sad stories. Do you read those, or does that, like, affect you in a negative way? Uh, I've, I definitely, I'll go through the comments and I'll read them and stuff. And um, I'll, I'll reply to some of them as well. Like if I see them, I'll usually reply and say that I'm like praying for them and stuff like that. Yeah, it must be hard because a lot of people are sharing stories of death, whether it's pets or relatives. And I feel like that could get heavy on someone if you just read that all day long. Yeah, no, I, like I'm a pretty like, even though my songs and stuff are sad and I have a lot of like sad fans, like I'm a pretty positive person. And like, I try not to get sad and stuff because I feel like that's not a good mindset. Um, yeah, that's, that's like one of the reasons I make music as well too. Like that's a good uh, escape for me, like to put all my sadness into it. Would you consider yourself still an outcast? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of my views on the world, like I don't really want to talk about it, but like they're quite a bit different than most people.
you can't just tease me like that <laughs> and not give me a small sliver a small uh, uh, i mean like just like religion i feel like like a lot like i feel like especially in north america like a lot of people like they might say they believe in god and stuff but they i don't know it's like i feel like they don't a lot of people don't you know yeah they say they do but they don't practice yeah you know, you're talking about like uh you know obviously racist people who you know say things and yeah. do things but you know, after that's all said and done, they still go to church because they believe that that absolves yeah. them of all of the hatred that actually lives within. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot. Of, yeah, there's a lot of idols and stuff now where like people will like make their own god, you know, and it's like just follow the rules they want and stuff. How do you, Pao Fu? Is Pao Fu more of an outcast, or is Isaiah more of an outcast? Uh, <laughs> uh probably Pao Fu. I mean, like the music I make is pretty different as well i'd say i don't know I, i'm probably I, I don't know I, I was definitely more of an outcast in like high school because i was i was like scared of what people thought of me and stuff in grade 12 and like i don't know i kind of stayed like i'd rather stay at home by myself and not talk to anybody i definitely like came out of my shell a bit more and you write that people go and drink and do drugs and you'd be at home getting mad over writing a song <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you still get mad over writing a song uh, not I haven't gotten at it in a while. Although I've I've been pretty frustrated lately. Like it's been like sometimes I'll go through phases where it's like hard to write lyrics, you know. And then sometimes I'll be inspired and I'll be writing lyrics like not tomorrow. What feeds that inspiration? Is it living life? Is it getting out of that very dark room of yours? Like what 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 fuels you and keeps you? Uh, fit? I I don't know. It's it's different things. Like if I if I was like locked in my room for like a week. I got probably I'd probably be pretty sad and like I don't know bored or like hopeless or something. So that could probably inspire inspire like a good sad song, you know. And then like, but also like with this quarantine, that's kind of what's been happening. And like I feel like going out and hanging out with people and stuff is like a good break from it and like rejuvenates my thinking, which uh, I haven't really really been able to do. So. Well, it's good when you get to, like, I don't know, talk to normal people, hear what's yeah. going on in their lives. Uh -huh. Collection. Uh, How did your parents take it when you told them that you wanted to be a rapper? Well, I never really said that. Uh, like, growing up, my dad was in a band, so he was already kind of in the music business. And then um, I stole his microphone, and uh, I just, like, started recording music on GarageBand. And, like, it was just, like, a hobby at first. Like, they'd rather me make music than, like, be playing video games. So I'd make music, like, a few hours a day. And then I decided three years ago to upload on SoundCloud. And then it was kind of like a little bit more than a hobby. Like it was like my favorite hobby. And it's kind of what I always wanted to spend time doing. But like I'd be working a part-time job at the same time. And then uh, slowly like I would less my hours on my part-time job and like raise my hours on my music. And like, and then it eventually it became my career. Your dad was in a band, right? Mm -hmm nerves playing him your first song or like at what point in your process were you comfortable enough sharing a piece of your art with him i mean i'd always i'd always share the songs i wrote with him like because i like when i was 12 i'd be like writing songs and stuff and when you're 12 like you don't really care what people think so like i'd show him and like was, i would show him growing up like even until now i still show him my songs and like He's definitely the person, though, that, like, I'm most nervous showing them to, just because, like, I've always looked up to him. But, uh, yes, yeah. Are you, do you feel like you're doing him proud right now? Yeah, no, he's super proud. Like, that, a, a week ago, I showed him, uh, like, a little verse I wrote, and uh, he just started crying, so that was, that was pretty crazy. Wow. Yeah. What, what, what is that song about? I, I uploaded it onto my Instagram, like, a week ago, I think, or two weeks ago. And it's like, it's kind of the same thing as Deathbed. It's kind of like Deathbed Part 2. And just like being stuck in a hospital. Are you telling stories top to bottom with your EPs? Or are they scattered songs that have individual stories? Yeah, it's more scattered songs. So when you're putting together an EP, because it looks like you're only really doing EPs. And that's mm -hmm. on purpose. Yeah. Are you looking for Sonic? Uh, similarities are you looking for like what's your goal when you're uh, i'm looking for I'm, I'm looking for like differences basically like uh, i feel like like i like i started out with just like basic hip-hop rap and then i've been singing more lately and then like i feel like i don't know i just have like kind of different genres that i go into i feel like 
And so like with each EP I've released, I've tried to have like a straight hip hop song that people would like, or like a hype punk rock kind of song that people would like, and then like a weird bedroom pop song. And like, I just try and have like songs of different categories so that everybody has a song on the EP that they would enjoy listening to. And you get a Blink-182 remake. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. That's fucking dope. Thank you. <laughs> Wild. How'd that come about? Uh, well, I signed with Columbia, and then they asked me if there's anybody I would want to collab with. And I was like, uh, I mean, Blink-182 is pretty sick. And then they're like, oh, like they're signed to us. And I was like, oh, no, wait. So then they're like, yeah, we'll hit them up and see if they want to work with you. Well, I haven't got to hear the whole EP. So what is that like? Are Mark and Travis on it or is what's going on with that? Yeah, so they kept my first verse in the song. And uh, Travis is drumming, out, drumming throughout the whole thing. And then Mark... Uh, did his own verse for the second verse. Oh, that's so sick! Yeah. What's your reaction when you first listened to that? I mean, I was hyped. It was it was weird hearing like my favorite band, who's like been a legend since I was born, sing on it, which is awesome. Yeah. I, was, I was just mind blown. You see, Machine Gun Kelly go from kind of rap to now doing pop punk. Do you see yourself kind of going that direction in the future? Uh, I mean, I've always kind of I like already have punk songs. Oh, like I feel like I like going back and forth, like. Hip, I like I love hip hop and I also love punk, so it's like I'll continue to do both. When you sing, it sounds like pop punk, and it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, that's awesome. That's what I'm going for. Wrong. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of the feeling I got from "I'll Come Back to You." Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's interesting. That's cool. Is is that a is that a true story? I'll come back to you. Yeah. No, me and me and Rose Boy just wrote that one together. So how do you come up with that whole story of walking into somebody's house and she's standing there with the boyfriend if you've never kind of experienced something like that? I mean, I watch a lot of like romantic movies and like those, those inspire me a lot as well. So like, yeah, I also hear like, I feel like long distance relationships are a pretty common thing for a lot of people. So like I've heard stories from people over time and stuff about it. I'm sure you get asked about it all the time, but like how has TikTok really changed your life? I mean, I mean it's, de it's definitely helped it. Um, like... I know a lot of people look at it as like a cringy platform and like I can see how they get sick of songs quickly because you're just constantly hearing them. Um, I mean, I'm super thankful for it though. Like I like it definitely helped death by get to where it is. So that's, that's awesome. And it's, yeah, it's also spread it throughout the world. Like I feel like a lot of, a lot of like Asian places, like cities and stuff like, I feel like TikTok is a big thing there. So like it helps get it to different places. Yeah, I think TikTok, TikTok is great to launch music. I mean, on the radio, we're a majority of the songs we're playing are because they blew up on TikTok now. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. One of them. Uh, your Spotify bio reads alternative punk, lo-fi, hip-hop, romantic, one milk, two sugar type. Um, follow my Insta. Uh, so... <laughs> I want to, what, you like coffee? One milk, no. two sugars? Is that how you, you, you don't drink coffee at all? Uh, I drink it at church like once a week. What, to stay awake through mass? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I definitely used to fall asleep to church at crap time, so coffee would help with that. <laughs> um, no, I, I just like, I, I never make, like we don't really have coffee here, so I just never make it, but at church it's like right in front of you, so I'm like, might as well try it. <laughs> and what do you think? I, I like it. It's pretty good. I just don't drink it often enough. You like it enough for once a week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> alternative punk. I, I mean, hip hop, it all combined into one. Do you feel like you're following the footsteps of any one artist or are you kind of pioneering a little bit of a new format? I mean, like there's, there's been like hip hop artists in the past who have done like, like, I mean, like Lil Peep, like he's kind of mm -hmm. considered hip hop and Post Malone as well. Like, they're considered hip hop, but they also like kind of have like a punk rock type voice at the same time, you know? So it's like, there's people that have kind of done it, but it's like, I don't know. I just, I guess I'm kind of doing it too. It's not like I'm following them though. It's just, that's what's natural for me. Do you know why coffee blew up the way it did? Do you feel like you understand why it's become a hit? I, f I feel like I know the reasons that I encouraged it to. I mean, like, first of all, like the, the melody like of the of the chorus like going through it the whole song is like just super catchy like the, the beat by itself like could have done really good you know and then on top of that like just the story that i put on it is like something that not a lot of people talk about so it's like a lot of people find it like heavy and and relatable as well since death is such a common thing 
As we hang here today, do you think Coffee for Your Head will be the biggest song you've ever made? I don't know. I, I don't want to say yes to that. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, hopefully not. It will be cool if I have a bigger one, but I have, I have no idea. I'm excited to hear what's, I mean, obviously what's coming next. Uh, the timeline on all of this, like these songs have been around for a while. So I'm interested to see where you're at today. And mm -hmm. also like how the success of this record does change the way you craft a song today. Like whether you say it doesn't or it does, like you learned a whole new formula that maybe you didn't understand before. Yeah, yeah there, true. Is, there is a reason. There is a science a little bit behind why something works. Well, yeah. that and great story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, that's like my favorite thing is just writing stories. So that's that's basically what I want. Like, I don't want to release a song if it's not a good story, you know? Well, as of right now, it seems like A World of Chaos and Popular Girl, Typical Boy, they aren't released yet. That comes out on Friday when the whole EP comes out, right? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what are those? What's A World of Chaos about? I mean, it seems pretty relevant today. Um, yeah. So that one, I was kind of like inspired by my, like growing up, my parents would fight quite a bit. So in that one, I'm like talking about, it's a, uh, it has like, it's cool because we wrote that one in New York City with all my friends that I met like for the first time in person. So like me, Rose Boy, Jomi, and Jomi uh, wrote it all together in the little Airbnb we had. And so I wrote the chorus first for it and I'm talking about like uh, being in a relationship and like how like it's kind of a rough patch right now and we're fighting a lot, but like I don't want to break up with her because I know I'll regret it and like it's not the right choice to make. So it's just talking about like trying to find hope and peace and stuff in the relationship after a song like that or any song do you i mean do you learn like when you go back and like do you learn new things about yourself do you learn new things about how you could have handled that situation that you're writing about i don't know i don't think so i've never really been asked that question well what what do you mean by it i mean you you write a song about being in a relationship or falling mm -hmm. in love so deeply with somebody now, when you write out your feelings and you kind of dissect your emotions, yeah. you end up realizing things. And then, like, you learn things that change the way you act moving forward. Yeah, I, I mean, that's could've, that could have happened. I can't really think of, a, of like, an example for it. But, I mean, it probably has. I know Scars on My Heart, like, that one was about, like, a breakup I had. And I, I probably learned some stuff from that, like writing, writing out all my feelings and stuff. Well, I was going to say, you told in your Genius interview, you said you had a girlfriend that you met in church, right? Yep. Does, uh, does that make it easier or harder to write these songs when you are in a happy relationship, I would assume you're in? Uh, it makes it easier writing happy songs, definitely, because there's a lot of happy things in our relationship. Um, but like, I, I feel like I can still, like, I still write sad songs and stuff. As, I, I feel like I've, written more happy songs though now yeah yeah i think at the end of that interview you also said you don't try to write dark songs or something like that <laughs> it seems like a lot of your songs have some pretty dark lyrics yeah no i feel like i feel like a lot of my songs are like kind of sad i guess but like i don't want to make them like there's like there's emo rap you know where it's like they go like really like they talk about a lot of dark stuff like cutting themselves and like self-harm and like drugs and stuff you know it's like i try to stay away from that side of it Gotcha. Well, you seem like quite the hopeless romantic, and I wanted to know what your favorite rom-com was, because when I thought of Deathbed and I listened to it, mm -hmm. I kind of get like a notebook type, like at the end, where they're yeah. both in the same bed together and they die together. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's, that was like my very first romantic movie that I saw. I watched mm -hmm. it with my, with my grandma and my mom. <laughs> so, Adorable. Uh, yeah, and then I was like, when I watched it, I was like, that was pretty good. And then like, then, like the next two weeks after I was just like every day I was just like thinking about it I was like wow that's a good movie <laughs> and, then, and then so I wanted to watch more of it and then, so I watched like I watched Dear John and The Vow and those ones were both really good as well I'd say Dear John is probably my favorite one favorite rom-com okay that's a lot of romantic comedies to handle I, I could <laughs> You are emotional Teflon, my friend. Yeah, I love that stuff. <laughs> when, like anything that gets me in the feels, I like it. Yeah. Do you use that as like the motivation for your songs sometimes? Like yeah. watching yeah. romantic comedies? Yeah, no, I'll use it sometimes. Like if I watch, what if I watch a movie that like makes me feel some way, I'll try. I'll try to write lyrics about it. Pal Fu, Death Bed, Coffee for Your Head. That is a. Uh, that's the song. I mean, it's 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 a wild story and. Uh, this chick 
B, I mean, she must be happy as a pig in poop, right? You know, this song is big. She's making some money. Is it weird? I was looking at, and this is my final thought, and I, I know we got to wrap it. Um, I was looking at the writing credits, and for some reason, I couldn't find your name on there. What's going on there? On Spotify? Genius is where I go, but maybe Genius is not good enough. Oh, yeah. I, I have no idea about that. I mean, I definitely wrote some stuff no, on you, it. So. You, you, did, <laughs> you definitely wrote a whole rap on it. I'm not sure what happened there. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, people above are listening and they'll get it fixed over at Genius. I know there's some guy by the name of Pig something, and uh, there's, like, there's like four other people. But um, wait, Pig of Pluto, is that your name? That's is it, is, does that say that's one of the writers? No, hold on. It says there is a weird name. I'll tell you right now. No, because like Pig of Pluto is like a, a username I've used. Like when I play video games, that's like my username. But like I don't know why that would be on my music here. <laughs> oh no, his name is Pig, but he goes by Oscar Lang and then um, an Otter Pop. Okay, Otter Pop is the guy that made the beat. Uh, uh, Do you know? know. Who do we know this? First name Pig, last name Lang? <laughs> no. That's terrible. Um, well, hey, Pao Fu, Deathbed. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's nice meeting you guys. Well, nice to meet you, too. Uh, we're big in Canada. Mm -hmm. Your room looks very peachy and very bright and sunny and a lot of exciting things in there. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of dark, though, but I got a big window, so there's a lot of natural light. <laughs> well, I appreciate you hanging out, and everybody should know that poems... Uh, Poems from the Past, correct? Poems mm -hmm. of the Past. Yep. That is the EP. It, it really is worth your ear. And all of your music, man, beyond, uh, beyond fulfilled and fed by your art. So I thank you very much. Thank you. It was nice seeing you guys. Have a good day. Later. Hey, beautiful human. Thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot. So we got Eclipse Channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore. So we just gave you the highlights. Please subscribe. And uh, notifications and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.